send out the link. So they should be joining in just a second. Okay. And we know, um, Samantha, if you can hear me, can you just send me a chat on what time Ty needs to be off, please? Okay, here we go. They're coming in the room now. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes, you're perfect. Okay. Oh, thanks. All right. All right, to a couple of the media that are joining, can you guys hear us okay? I can see you in the room, but I cannot I see your, oh, here we go. Okay. I perfect. can see it here. Awesome. Hello. All right, hi, everybody coming in. Right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I know we were um, a little bit delayed on using the correct link, but we wanna maximize um, time as well with you guys. So. We'll go ahead and start the process of taking questions. Um, but then also, if anyone misses a part of this, we'll have the audio and the video available if, if they miss the, the beginning of it. So to kick us off, um, Dustin, would you like to kick us off with a question? Thanks. Um, Ty, I wanted to ask you is, what impacted you the most with your conversation with Bubba on Instagram the other night? And how that's kind of how that maybe has guided uh, anything that you've done or thought about uh, in the since you've had that conversation with him. I think um, you know I've known Bubba. I think I was 13 when I first started racing, and Bubba Wallace was one of the first kids I met at the racetrack or followed and knew. As um, kind of when you go to the racetrack, your you, your first thing is to figure out who's the best. Now, Bubba was younger than me, but in the class that he was in. He was the best. So I always watched him and uh, we knew each other. Then we ended up racing against each other. So our whole careers have uh, been a, a kind of a mirror back and forth. I, I'm a little bit older than Bubba, but um, yeah. so I've known him my, my whole career and growing up and seeing him grow up as well. And to hear the stories about how, how Bubba was treated in, in some of those situations and knowing Bubba's character, knowing him as a human being, um, that blew my mind because I would have never thought, I just would have never thought Bubba as a person would have gone through anything like that. But I think that's just what it is, is I think sometimes it's easy for us who don't know as a white man or a white person in general, we don't know these stories. We don't all the time ask the right questions uh, to become informed. Um, and, and just hearing what he's gone through in his career um, and having to deal with people on top of being a good race car driver, which makes people not like you always, but the color of his skin um, being something that he's had a battle too in his career and will have to continue to battle. Um, I think just hearing those stories impacted me and, and just saying that, you know, Bubba's going through this, so is everyone else that, uh, that looks like him. So why can't we empathize to learn more and hear the stories um, so that so that we can help make a change, have the right verbiage in our communities and in our groups, um, so that this problem doesn't continue on. Obviously, this is one of the few sports that's active right now. And I know that, as you've talked about, even on Instagram, kind of figuring things out on your own, as, as many people are. But with the platform that the sport and its competitors have, you know, this weekend, there are no easy answers. I understand that, but are there any type of things beyond what's been said or done so far this week that can be done community wide, or is that uh, best left to each individual to kind of figure out how to to express themselves? Um, you know, I think it obviously anything that's being said or expressed has to come from a true heart. So that does come from the individual. But I think it does take as a group saying that we don't stand for it. And once we all know and we're all on the same page of saying we don't stand for it, we come together um, with a united voice um, saying that that doesn't, we don't tolerate hate, racism, bigotry in our sport. 
and um, and that it's not okay. And there's great conversations going on um, with with the folks in our sport um, on this and uh, planning a, a united front uh, to to make a statement. Um, and I'm very proud of that. So, um, you know, our sport is doing a good job, but it also takes the individuals who um, aren't afraid to step out and say, this isn't about me anymore. And that's tough in our sport because our sport is all about being number one, having the most influence as far as followers and um, the sponsorship, being up front. It's, it's a very um, selfish, motivated sport. Uh, just what it is there's one winner in our sport and there's usually a bunch of losers trying to figure out how to get there so our mindset our whole careers from the time we're 12 or 13 which are very impactful years in a human being's life is try to figure out how to get yourself there and for one time for the drivers and everybody in nascar who have worked so hard to get to this place we have a platform where there are people that we can influence and um, be true leaders and being a true leader um, you don't make it about yourself. It's about the others in life. So um, I think there's great conversations going on around how we can make this um, uh, a united front and voice to hopefully help change and make it not about being scared anymore to, to acknowledge that there is something wrong here. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Steve. Steve, go ahead. Yeah, hi, Ty. I, I was curious about the uh, the response you've received uh, from some of your, your very heartfelt posts that you've had on social media, and following that up to, uh, about was there any is there any hesitation in racing because you are a largely white sport? I think with a very largely white and conservative audience about getting out and and tackling such a topic as this. Yeah, I think it's um, you know it's something to certainly that a lot of people consider and it keeps a lot of people who feel strongly about this subject from saying things. Um, it is tough and I'm not one to say, to say, Hey, you need to speak up and, and tell other people what to do. But for me, I can tell you about my heart on it. And to me, I don't care if I ever win a race or a championship in my life or lose every follower I have on Instagram or sponsor that I have. Um, but when I, when my children grow older and I take my last breath, I want to be made sure that I was on the right side of what I felt um, is going on in history. And that means way more than, than acquiring fame and trophies and wins. Now, those things all fade away, but the impact you had on human beings in your life and relationships last forever. So that's my heart behind this. I know some people might not feel the same as me, and I understand that as well. Everyone's entitled to, to an opinion. Um, I just wanted to stop um, in the middle of my career and say, hey, this is where I stand. And, um, you know, there is, there is the taunting in your head of, you know, what if I lose this or what if something happens? But I know at the end of the day, this is what I believe in, and um, I'll stand up for what I believe in. What has the reaction been that you, you've received so far? Uh, it, it, it's been very positive. Uh, I, I've had a really great reaction. Uh, obviously, there's the few that, that don't agree, um, but you know, I, I'm not looking for someone to agree with me. I'm just talking about how I feel right. um, on the subject. So, you know, you always – you can't do anything – in, in this day without making one person mad or uh, somebody else happy but this this is who I am and um, I want to use my platform to talk about things that matter to me whether it makes some people uncomfortable or not um, so but you know in general the the, the it's been overwhelmingly positive good. and um, so that that's been really great all right thanks Ty appreciate it thanks. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Bob Pockers. Bob, go ahead. Might be muted. I can't hear it. Yeah, I think Bob may have lost connection. We'll see if he um, pops back in. Um, any additional questions for Ty? We have him for just a few more minutes. We'll see if Bob pops back in. But if you have a question, just please. Oh, here we go. Alex, we'll go to your question. 
Hey Ty, sorry, I'm, I'm hopping on the call a little bit late. Um, so I apologize if you already answered this, but um, you know, what, I guess, what do you think NASCAR as a sport um, can sort of do moving forward to, to address some of the issues and maybe lack of representation that, that's been historically in part of the sport? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's an, an, an unfortunate thing that, that there has been um, in the past um, a bit of a, a stigma about our sport as being not accepting um, and, and kind of an underlying racist tone to our sport that um, I know doesn't exist in the sanctioning body and in, in the drivers and in the sport um, in an intimate level um, outside of what the fans and media maybe get to see. I think there's a lot of great hearted people in our sport, but also this is a time for us to speak up and confirm that. And um, so, um, like I said earlier, uh, there's a lot of great conversations going on. And I think we all understand as a group of drivers, our influence and NASCAR uh, as a body, which is great. We're all working together in this. We have to change it. Uh, we have to make sure that the message isn't just for right now, that we come together and come up with a plan that this is who NASCAR is today, tomorrow, and forever. Um, so there's been a lot of great discussions of, of how we're going to move forward and, and make sure that we move out of this narrative of the past, that all these drivers that I feel like are in cup and in the sport now never wanted to inherit that tag or title, but this is the time for us to change it for history. And uh, I think we have a lot of passionate leaders in our group that uh, you know, are, are working together with everyone to try to, to, to encourage great change. Thank you. Okay, I believe Jesse has a question. Jesse, do you have a question? Hi. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm coming in a little late as well. But um, my question is, do you feel like athletes have a responsibility because they do have this platform? Or do you think how like Michael Jordan was like, even Republicans buy shoes? Like, what's your stance on that? Yeah, I can't really speak to Michael Jordan. Um, I can just speak to my heart as far as what leadership means to me. And I think every human being has a role in leadership in their life. And um, whether you own a business, you are a professional athlete, the amount of people that you might lead could be different, but it's all important. Um, to me, the most important leadership I have is to my wife and to my kids. Um, so whether it's your family, your friends that you spend time with in your small community, or it's um, as a professional athlete, I have a platform of followers on, on Instagram um, that follow me. And to what, to much is given, there's much is, is expected. Um, so it's a blessing for me to have the following that I have. Um, and, and I can lead to the people that follow me and, and try to say, hey, this is who I am. And you can follow me in this way. Or you can choose not to, um, but we all have opportunities to lead in life and um, to have the excuse that y you you're you know too small for people to care. No one in life is is unimportant to not lead in in some kind of way. And I think once we all believe in ourselves in that way, we we will start to change things. Okay, I believe Bob rejoined us, so we'll take our last question from Bob. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, Ty, I was wondering, I mean, obviously you all have a strong platform and your words can speak volumes, but I'm curious if there's been any discussion about any sort of action points or things that you can do um, beyond just, uh, beyond the importance of speaking as far as, um, you know, trying to help understanding um, with what's going on in society. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's been some really great discussions privately behind the scenes with NASCAR and the, the, um, the executives in NASCAR and all the drivers. So, um, you know, I, I hope and expect soon that we'll come out with, um, with a way of setting a tone um, uh, with, with our hearts on this subject. So um, I think the greatest thing that all of us can have is conversation conversation leads to change conversation leads to empathy and understanding um so that's happening and um i first just want to say i think bubba wallace's 
strength to speak up during this time for our sport it has been uh, has been awesome, and I'm, and I'm just uh, proud of him as a friend, uh, knowing him his whole career too. And um, I think uh, I think we're going to see great things come out of this generation of NASCAR uh, of who is in the sport right now. Um, hopefully, it sets the tone for who comes after us and. For all of us, that'll be the most important thing that we do. Is there anyone at NASCAR directing the discussion? Anyone at NASCAR? Yeah. Uh, is there a certain? Are you talking? Is it Phelps? Is it O'Donnell? Is it somebody within their diversity programs? Is, is there kind of a point person for that yet? Um, not yet. I think we're we're in discussions. I think it's coming from individuals. Um, right now it's a lot of driver discussion with NASCAR saying let's do this together we want to be a part of it um, NASCAR is, has has confirmed their heart in this situation and is backing the hearts of a lot of the drivers in this so um, I'm excited I think something great's going to come out of it and uh, yeah I think it's a there's a group of real true leaders of drivers that are standing up and um, and leading and and so, so I'm, I'm excited. I, I think that um, there is great opportunity here to hopefully make some, some changes. Thank you. Well, Ty, we thank you for your time. I know you have um, some additional interviews you need to get to, but thank you again for joining us here this afternoon. Okay, thank you, guys. We wish you good luck in Atlanta as well. Thanks. We need it. <laughs>